Hello, Pinter Power here. That's yeah, Christmas Day. Yeah, pretty much everything's all done. Um, I'm going to label this video up here uh, Glock or not. Um, I'm going to put this out here for a few people that might still be looking for uh, a pistol or something to uh, protect themselves, a house, car, truck, whatever. Um, I'll start out here. i got a little list here. I've got a uh, reliability affordability, parts, accessories, and service. Um, these are all going to come to play. Um, let's start out with the word affordability. Um, biggest misconception of affordability it seems that I hear all the time from people ends up being the cheapest damn thing in the world. Now, if you're looking for affordability, something to protect yourself, and uh, the cheapest you can go, 150 bucks for a uh, high point. If you want to do that, that's fine. They do work. A friend of mine had one and it worked, and he had a little problem with it. Sent it back. They just gave him a new one. Um, service is pretty good. But like I said, this is a, a Glock video pretty much. It's going to be Glock or not. It's up to you to make your own misconception. There's going to be a lot of people. I'm sorry, misconception. Make, make up your mind what you're going to get. Um, it's going to be very hard. A lot of people are going to go, oh, you need to get an XD. You know, those are all the people that hate Glocks. Or then you're going to hear the Glock people get a Glock, 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 Glock. They're going to shove it down your throat. There is a lot of good companies out there. Um, Smith & Wesson with the M&P. Springfield, of course, with their wide array selection of XDs. XDSs, XDMs. And it just keeps on going. Um, SIG, of course, you're going to run into people where it's, if it's not a SIG, it's not a gun. Um, they're, they're all good guns. Ones you don't hear of too often um, are H&Ks. That's because of the money. They usually run about 250 bucks to 400 bucks higher, depending on where you get them, than an XD or a Glock or a Smith & Wesson. Um, I do have another video of that I made of my H&K P30 that I have, and I, I love that gun. If you are looking for one gun to, you know, protect your home, protect your family, um, take it with you wherever you go, um, you're going to be a one-gun person, and you're going to shoot, and you're going to train with that gun, and you're going to be safe with that gun, and you don't have any inclination of changing the sights, the barrels, or any of that stuff, um, and you can swing the extra 250 bucks. And I say 250 because these typically run right around six. This here is the Gen 4 Glock 17 and 9 millimeter. It is the full size, um, the newer ones that they've got out. Um, if you can swing it, I would say get an H and K. Yeah, a lot of people will disagree with me. Why are you going to pay that much more money for a gun when you can get a clock for $200 cheaper and does more? I agree. But there is people that keep their stuff stocked, and that's it. Now, if you don't want to spend the extra 200 bucks and you don't see the reason for it, especially if you're going to keep it stocked, by all means, get the Glock. They're going to probably be easier and faster to sell if you don't want it. Um, they've been making polymer pistols a lot longer than anybody else has. This is all they do. This is what they do. And don't get me wrong here. Because I got a Glock and I got a Glock placemat here. You're going to think I'm Glock, Glock, Glock. Well, I'm not. I have four of them right now. I've had a total of ten. But I also have an XD that I will never get rid of. It's a sump compact and it's an OD green and you never see it anymore. It's in 40 and that gun has never failed me either. It is a great gun. I've had some Smiths too. I've had a couple M&Ps. I don't have them anymore. I just, for some reason or another, I just felt like, oh, I'm going to get another Glock. So I did. I also have a SIG. I have an M11A1. It's in the safe right now. I also have the H&K P30, like I said, that you need to check out my other video. That is a great gun. The main reason why I will tell you to get this one is it matches all the criteria that I made on this list. And that is reliability, affordability, parts, accessories, and service. Now, let's talk about service here. 
90% of the places you go to and buy this gun or a gun, whatever, pistol, revolver, whatever you do, 90% of the places, whether it be a local gun shop, you know, a great big retail center, an outlet, a mall, or whatever you buy it from, when you walk out that door, you're the warranty. Yes, there is a warranty on the gun, but once you bought it from that dealer or gun shop or the local gun shop that you love, you may even drink coffee with them. They will not send it back to you, for you, I'm sorry, unless you really, really know them. 90% of the time, you're going to have to go get the box to ship it back in. You're going to have to go to USPS, pick out that certain special box, put it in here, make sure it's unloaded. And once you've bought in this pistol, it's in your name. You can legally send it from your house to the manufacturer. And the manufacturer can ship it back to you after they fix it. Now, sometimes, like the uh, XD that I had, they put uh, night sights on it for me and a combat trigger, which I guess they don't do that anymore. I was able to send it to them, but once they did that, they had to send it back to an FFL dealer. Then I had to go pick it up from It didn't cost me a dime. But they treated me really good. XD is, is Springfield's a really good company. Now, <clears throat> Springfield's also an American company. But you look at Springfield and you pick up an XD and you look at it. It may not even have anything on the slide. I can't remember what it says on the slide for origin. But the frame itself will tell you it's made in Croatia. No. The one I have over here, this is the 17 Gen 4. I have a 22 over here in Gen 4. This one here is made in Austria. This one over here is made in USA. Beretta does the same thing. SIG kind of does too. SIG, I guess some of their parts are from Germany, kind of like Beretta's from Italy, but made over here. I mean, it, it never doesn't matter. Now, I'm going to tell you this one here. Now, you can find a Gen 3 and you can probably find them for cheaper. Now a lot of people like the Gen 3 versus the Gen 4. I myself like the Gen 4 versus the Gen 3. Because to me, Glock listened to the majority of the public who didn't like the things about Gen 3 and they changed them. Now I'll show you this one here. I'm going to have to unload it. All my guns are loaded. People always ask me if they're loaded. I always tell them wouldn't do any good if it wasn't. So let's go ahead and clear this. Loaded. Clear. Now, taking these apart are simple. Notice how I wrap my hand around it. Pull back a little bit after you've squeezed the trigger and it cleared the chamber, of course. Move that forward. Slide off. Slide apart and out. You're done. Now, getting back to what they changed on this, they changed the texture. Some people call it the stippling. They changed that on the frame. They made it a little bit more aggressive, but not too aggressive where it scratches the hell out of you. They've also changed the contour of the back strap here. This does not have any back straps on it. You will get extra back straps in your box that is called a multiple backstrap system which up in here says my camera is pretty crappy but it says right there MBS which means multiple backstraps now this gun also says if I can get it right here you can see it right there made in USA I'm sorry my camera is really crappy but you're just gonna have to trust me Oh, no, no, the MBS just showed up right there. But anyway, that's made in USA. If you want a USA-made gun and USA company, yada, 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 I guess you'll probably have to go to Smith. This is based out of Austria, but they have a corporate office in Simona, Georgia. This one here is all stamped USA, upper and lower. Now, the reason why I'm going to tell you Glock is probably your best bet. From price ranges at high point from 150, all at the Kimber 1200, 1500, and even into Wilson Combat Nighthawk 3000 and 5000 dollars. 
$600. That's without the ammo, that's without any of your cleaning materials, you know, targets, ear protection, eye protection. You're starting off at a good base here at 600 bucks. Now, the reason why I'm going to tell you this too, if you're into changing sites, you know, um, changing colors, changing things, um, you know, maybe you want a separate gun but don't want to pay the extra money for a separate gun. Maybe you want a 9mm as well. That's the reason why I'm going to tell you Glock. And it's going to be Glock or not. You'll figure it out here in a second. For an extra $100, I can change this barrel out. Even though I didn't need this 9mm, I just bought it anyway. Because to me, it's quicker and easier just to grab a different gun. Now, this 40 over here, it is the same size. Same thing, same dimension, same everything. Except this one's made in Austria and this one's USA. The only difference, I guess, between these two are the coating. The Austria one has strychnine in the coating, has something to do with the hardening process, but they found out a way they could do it in USA without the strychnine and make everything legal with all your EPA regulations. Now, getting back to the $600 one gun, you can change this gun into a completely four guns. Let's say this was the 40 cal that's over here. If I buy the barrel for 100 bucks. And use the same mag, I can shoot 357 SIG through the 22. I know I'm kind of doing this and making you screwed up here, even though this is the 9, but pretend this is the 40. It's the same size pretty much. You can change it to a 9 for 100 bucks. I'm sorry, for 125, the barrel and the mag, and then you have a 9. For another 225 bucks, you can buy the 22 conversion kit. You get the slide, the barrel. A recoil spring and the mag for 220 bucks, and you change your Glock 22 into a 22 caliber gun, which the 22 model is the 40. I know it seems kind of confusing. The reason why they number these guns, like they have right here, 17, 22. This one here is a 9 millimeter. It's only a coincidence that it holds 17 rounds. It has nothing to do with that number right there. That number right there is their patent numbers. That's how they do the model numbers of their gun. The 17, the 22, the 23, the 27. All those. No, we won't get into that. That's really confusing. But anyway, if you want one gun, and maybe just change the night sights on it, and for the price. And remember, going back to my reliability, affordability, parts, accessories, and service. This is going to be the gun for you. Now, SIG makes a very good gun as well. So does H&K. Out of all my favorite guns in the vault, the best feeling, the best all-around gun, and that's considering the 17, the 22, the M11A1, the XD, and the H&K. For the extra money, and I know you're going to think I'm crazy, but that H&K is the best gun, hands down. It shoots the best, it feels the best, it looks really cool. You can't change out the stuff like you can a Glock. It doesn't have a metal uh, frame like the SIG does. I mean, there's lots of arguments here. But that is my choice and my preference. They usually run about 1019 for the H&K. I got mine from a local dealer who was selling it brand new for 845 bucks plus tax. I traded one of my old Gen 3's in on it and got it. So now all I have is all Gen 4's. I have an H and K. I have a SIG and I have an XD. And the Glocks I have, I have four of them. I have the 17, two individual 22's, one in flat dark earth, and I also have one for the wife. That's the Glock 42, the little 380. Now a lot of people call that the Gen 4, even though technically it's the Gen 1, it is based off the Gen 4 design. The grip, the feel, the texture, and everything, you just don't get multiple back straps with it. It still has the dual recoil spring, so what is it? A Gen 1, a Gen 4, or is it a Gen 1-4? You know, <laughs> technically it probably is a Gen 1-4. But without getting too confusing here, and I apologize for that, 
that's trying to help the certain people out that are choosing, well, should I do it? Because the question is, should I get a Glock or should I get something else? That's the real question. It's never, should I get a Smith? Or should I get an XD, or should I get a Springfield, or should I get a Glock? It's usually, should I get a Glock or something else? So that's why I'm labeling this video Glock or not. If you want to change all that stuff, and go through something like this, like what I mentioned, and have one gun, buying a couple different barrels, and maybe a couple different mags, and having a total of three or four guns, which still, based off this frame, you're going to have four guns. You want to do that and build on it and I recommend the Glock if you do not want to build on that you want one gun home protection carry it yeah I, I know you're gonna get into a lot of stuff here about carrying what's smaller or what's better or what's bigger or what's thinner or what's I've carried the small ones I've carried the mouse guns I've carried my big 45 you dress appropriately or wear what you want to wear you can carry every anything you want to carry it's up to you what money you want to spend what you feel is comfortable and what you like that H and K is badass but so is this so hopefully this helps if you have any questions hopefully I covered is basically everything I can about Glock or not um, if you have to uh, message me or something. I'll try to get back to you as soon as I can. But until then, um, hopefully everything you uh, decide or do is within your best interest, not everybody else's. Don't try to fit in, because it doesn't matter if if you buy a Glock or if you buy an H and K or you buy a Sig. They're gonna say, "Oh, why'd you do that? Well, you could have got this or you could have got that." You're gonna hear that anyway. Just like when I sell something, it's the same line. Oh, I would have bought that. No, you wouldn't have because I asked you. <laughs> but I'll go ahead and get this back for my safe. Now, another thing I should touch on before I let you go is uh, if you're worried about safeties. And a lot of companies out there have realized safety mechanisms aren't really that important anymore because I'll use a saying that I've heard before is safeties are bad because they go click when you expect it to go boom and boom when you expect it to go click I'll leave that one alone have a good day